All right, so now that we completed our back pants with the yoke and waistband, and then we did our front pants, we took off the waistband, and then we did the uh, front hip western style pocket. Now what we're ready to do is we're ready to move on to our back and do a back patch pocket. For this demo, the patch pocket that I'm going to be doing is specifically for jeans. So it's going to be a little bit of this western style back pocket. Of course, once you've gone through the process once, then you'll know after that exactly how to make a patch pocket. And then you can always do rounded corners, you can make it bigger, smaller, and you can change the design here at the top of the pocket to have all kinds of different pockets. So if you're doing jackets or something other than just jeans. Now, if you've been following along with the jean pant draft, you'll know that we already have our main body for the jeans. We've already developed the back yoke panel and cut that away. And we've also already developed our waistband and cut that away also. So what we're left here is this is the bottom of the yoke panel and the top of the main pants, our horizontal bounce line, crotch level line, and our knee level. Now, in the demo, I also did a mock-up during my first draft so I can test the fit of my pants. I also took the time to mark a location here. So this is a T cross mark. This lets me know the top of my pocket and the center of my pocket. Now, what I need to do is I need to find this location here on my pant draft. Some of you did not do the mock-up during the rough draft, and that's okay. What we can do is we can find the center of your pocket on your favorite pair of jeans, and then we'll find the location here on your jeans, and then we can also come up with the same location right here on your pant draft. Now, if you take a close look at this, we've sewn up some darts, we put in a stay stitch at the top edge, we cut all these edges off, I came in, I just freehanded some lines for the, where I wanted the yoke. A lot of this information here is a little bit sloppy and freehanded. But the things that are nice and crisp on here is going to be the horizontal balance line as well as my grain line, which I put in here using a pin pool so I know that they're right on grain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore all of this information here and I'm going to go off of these two balance lines. Basically what I can do is I can have my ruler parallel with the horizontal bounce line and I can come up here to that T location. And so for instance on mine I can see it's basically an inch and three quarters. Now I can come over to my horizontal balance line and I'll come up an inch and three quarters and I'll just put a light guideline on here. Now I want to know how far is it from the grain line going towards the side seam. So again, I can put my ruler on the grain line and I'm making sure that it's square with the horizontal bounce line. And I can see here it was one inch and five eighths. So on my pattern draft, I'll come down here. One inch and five eighths and here's the center of my pocket. So now I just wanted to come in and double check that location one more time. Once I have it correct, I'm going to circle that. So this is the top of my pocket and that's the center. Now something you're going to want to notice is the slope angle of the yoke is different than the straight across hip level line. Now I've seen both where sometimes the top of the back pocket is following the slope of the yoke. In this instance here, I'm doing the top of the pocket is parallel with the ground and also parallel with the horizontal bounce line. What I'm doing in this example is the same thing. I'm keeping the top of my pocket parallel to the ground and parallel with the horizontal bounce line, the crotch level line, and the knee level line. So I'm ignoring this angle right here. 
Okay, so let's take a look here at our store-bought pants. If you measure from the top of your pocket to the bottom of the yoke, and you come over here, you'll notice that the measurement is larger here and smaller there. So basically, the yoke angle is different from the top of your pocket. So on these store-bought pants, also the top of the pocket here is parallel to the ground, your knees, the crotch level line, the full hip level line. And then this yoke panel is a different angle. Sometimes I have seen where the top of the pocket follows the yoke, but usually you make it where it's totally parallel with the ground. All right, let's figure out how to find the location that you're going to put onto your pants pattern draft based on your store-bought pants. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to find the halfway point in the middle of your pocket. So I'm going to just measure from one edge at the top to the other side and I'll chalk it right here at the halfway point. Now what I want to do is I want to measure from center back on my pants all the way to the side seam of my pants. And let's find the halfway point on that. Now here you can see that the center of the pocket is the center of the full back pant leg. Another thing you're going to want to know is how big is the top of the pocket. So for instance here it's six. And then as you move down on this western style, it tapers down to be smaller. So it tapers down to five. So it's going from six down to five. Now this just happens to be the exact same size that I did on my industry size four pants. So basically this mock-up that I did is like a size zero or two. And I did the same size pocket where it was six inches at the top, five inches at the bottom. And the reason it's such a large pocket is because you want it to fit like your cell phone or something. But when a pocket gets kind of big like this, it also could look a little bit silly. What I want to do on my pants, since I'm doing a version of pants where the, it's going to have the contour waistband, she's not going to wear it with a belt, I want to give her kind of a smaller, cuter looking little back pocket. And it's not going to fit her cell phone very well, but at least it'll look really cute and stylish. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of 6 inches, 5 inches, I'm going to reduce it down to about 5 inches down to 4 inches. And I want to see how that looks on paper first. And then of course the last thing you want to know is what is the distance coming down from the bottom of the yoke to the top of your pocket. So in this instance we have about an inch and 3 quarters. So now you'll know when you come over to your draft, you're going to drop down an inch and three quarters, put your cross mark on here, and then you want to find going along where that cross mark is from the center back to the side seam, full bet in half, and then you'll have a cross mark for the location for your back pocket based on your favorite fitting pair of jeans. Now when I take a look at this, the store-bought pocket, versus the location of mine. It seems like mine is a little bit moved over towards center back, maybe even a little bit too much. So I might want to consider to bring mine back this way even a little bit more towards the side seam. I think what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll just check on the dress form one last time that I really do like this location here. After double checking this location here on my pants back on the dress form, I do agree that it needs to go a little more towards the side seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the same thing that we noticed on the store-bought pants, which was here at the top of the pocket, I can measure from center back to the side seam, divide that in half, and this will be the center of my pocket. And that helps for me because I'm going to move it a little more towards the side seam so it's not going into the curve on her backside. Alright, so what I want to do is on my pattern draft, I want to plot out what I think is going to be the finished pocket. So let's just take a look at these measurements again. Here they're having six at the top opening 
down here they're having five inches and the total is going to be five and three quarters. It's basically six inches tall. I'm sure when it was in production it was supposed to be six inches tall, six inches wide, and five inches down in this area. Also, when you look at this little V cutting down, that comes up about one inch. So you can see here I have the uh, pattern piece already. This is the one that matches the store-bought pants, where it's six inches wide, five inches wide, six inches tall. And I want to make mine smaller. I want to do five inches, five and three quarters, and then like four inches down at the bottom. So basically, this is the center of the pocket, and this is the top edge of the pocket. If I'm going to do five inches, I need to split that in half. So for me, I'll have two and a half out here two and a half out there, and this will total five inches. Go ahead and do your measurement now. Now for me, the total coming down, I don't quite need to do six inches. I'm gonna do um, five and five eighths. So that's coming down here for the bottom of the tip of the pocket. And I'll circle that. Now the next thing we want to find is where are these points right here. If I take my ruler and I'm following along the grain line and I'm moving up to where I'm hitting these two points, I can measure down to see where the tip is and here I'm seeing it's 5 eighths. I want to do the same thing on mine. So I'll come over here, here's the bottom tip, and I'll slide my ruler along the grain line and I'm going up 5 eighths. Then I can come out here and I can see basically right along my crotch level line is where those points would be. Now I'm going to go from 5 inches here down to 4 inches there. So basically I'll have 2 inches on this side and 2 inches on this side. And I'll circle those. Now let's just lightly draw the outline of your pocket. And keep in mind, you might not like this, so don't draw this too dark. That way it's easy to erase. Now this is going to be the final shape of your pocket without seam allowance. So you'll want to make sure, hey, does my phone fit in there? How about my hand? For instance, my hand is too large. My client's hand for this size pant would be smaller than mine. And you can also take this and just hold it up to your dress form or hold it up to your fit model and just see at full scale how does it look on her. I'm going to go ahead and try that now. All right, so I just taped this back up to my dress form so I could quickly look at uh, the size that I did. And it was definitely too long looking. I didn't like that. I wanted it to be a little bit shorter, a little cuter looking. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just shorten this up a little bit and uh, keep the width on there though. Okay, so I went and did another fitting back on the dress form just to see how the scale of this looks in proportion to her whole body. And I just shortened the uh, tip up a little bit more. I have everything cleaned up. And I erased the grain line here so it's easier to see this, this shaping in the pocket without having that line cutting through it. I went back and darkened everything in. I like how it looks now, so I'm going to go ahead and just circle these points one more time. And now we're ready to start drafting the pattern piece for this pocket. Now the style of pocket that I'm going to teach you, we're going to have a little motif design here, and it's all going to have finished fabric behind it. So we need to have some extra fabric here going above your pocket. So finding a clean piece of paper, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have the height of your pocket rounded up to the next inch, and add another five inches to that. For the width of your pocket, you want the width plus half inch seam allowance on either side, so I will just go ahead and add two more inches 
plus the width of your pocket. So here in my case, I have 10 inches tall by 8 inches wide. Now since I'm working on a dark tabletop, I'm going to put a clean piece of white paper behind this so it's easier to see through all layers. Now starting here at the bottom of your paper, let's go ahead and come up the first row of matrix dots and let's draw a line. And then we'll come up another half inch above that. That'll be our seam allowance. Now this is going to be the bottom of the pocket. And here's the bottom of the pocket. So I want to come back here and I'm going to line this up with the bottom of the pocket. And again, I'm leaving room for seam allowance. Now I also want to take the center of the pocket and I want to put that line in line it up with some of this matrix dots right here keeping my pattern piece in the middle now I can come in and I can line this point right here on my pocket and it's going to match this point right here I'm going to go ahead and tape this in place so it doesn't move Now it's pretty simple. I can come in here and I can get the corners of my pocket. And let's draw this in. Now let's just go ahead and quickly add our seam allowance for the sides and the bottom but don't add any seam allowance for the top edge. The next thing you want to determine is if you're going to do some kind of a top stitch motif, you want to draw that in first before we move on to establishing the seam allowance for the top edge. So for instance, on this western style, we have where this is angling down, mimicking what's going on here at the bottom of the pocket. Once we determined the start and stop points, then we knew how much fabric we're going to need to come all the way down to the bottom of that. If you take a look here at the store-bought pants, you can see that they just hem straight across. So it's just a double rolled hem with a double top stitch. So for that, all you would just do is a double rolled hem for your seam allowance. Now the reason they did this is because it's in production, this is super cheap and fast and easy to do. Now something you could do is just come in here if you want and just kind of freehand what you think would be your top stitch angle. Once you have something you like, take the measurement of what that is. So for instance, I'm doing about a quarter inch coming down here. In the middle this looks like seven eighths and I'll make sure I get back to a quarter inch over here. Now I can erase the old information and then I'll come in here and I'll draw this like it's a top stitch. Now on some sewing machines, they'll have two needles for doing a double top stitch all the way through. And so basically they'll just have one of the needles follow along here and you'll get your double top stitch. Since I'm going to be doing it by hand, what I'll end up doing is, is I'll end up stitching exactly along here and then I'll come back a second time and I'll follow from the width of the foot coming along and I'll get my second row of double top stitch. If you want a specific width on here, what you could do is you could specify the distance between the two and put chalk marks on your pattern piece so then you can make drill holes and chalk the actual fabric and the sample sewer will follow that exact width. So those are the different options. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just leave it like this, and then whatever the width of my foot is will be my second row of top stitching. Now that we know how far the top stitch is coming down, we'll know how large to make the folds going up. So for instance, on this fold, the bottom top stitch was there, and I have the bottom edge of the fabric is finishing right here. So then that's what determined how many folds coming up this direction. So let's find that now on yours. So measure from the top edge of your pocket heading down to the top stitch. And then keep in mind you're going to have a second row of top stitching. And then you still want to go below that a certain distance. So for instance, at least a quarter of an inch. Once you've figured out that measurement, come all the way back up to the top to read what it is. So for instance, mine would be an inch and a half. Now I can come an inch and a half above the top of the pocket. And this is going to be the first fold to the top. Then we want a second fold, which will be your seam allowance. And this is how you get the raw edge to hide inside of your pocket so it's not sticking out. So now here I'll add one half inch to the top of that. So this is fold number one and fold number two. And number two here is the top of your pocket. Let's go ahead and take this off and we'll finish up this pattern piece. Alright, let's turn our pocket so it's facing upright. Now again, this is the top edge of your pocket. If you want to, go ahead and just lightly draw a line all the way through so you can see that top edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold your paper on that top edge. Make sure that the pencil is exactly right on the top of the fold. Now the second thing we want to do is the next edge here is also our fold. So let's get that one as well. Now above that, this is going to be the raw edge of our fabric because this is the seam allowance. Alright, so this top edge here where the seam allowance is, let's go ahead and cut this away. Then go ahead and fold that raw edge under, just like you're going to do when you're sewing it. And then we'll fold this a second time right along that top edge. Now make sure underneath here, when you do your second row of top stitching, that you're going to catch all of the fabric underneath. So for instance, I can see that my second row of top stitching will be here. The needle's going to hit right there. So now I can see when I do my second row of top stitching and I poke through, I can see that it's catching all of my seam allowances that are folded under from the back side of the pocket. Now when you poked through, if it did not catch all of your seam allowance, what you need to do is change the location of your folds so that you have seam allowance going through all of those holes. So the thread should hit three layers of fabric. And for the beginners, if it's helpful, you can also put in another row of dots that we'll use for chalk marks onto your pocket, making sure that you do hit the correct location here. And you'll find that it also will be parallel to your foot if you're measuring off your foot, or if you're doing whatever width that you think looks good to your eye. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to cut the seam allowance while it's all folded closed. So cut right along the seam allowance edge.
And now you'll see when you unfold your pocket, you'll have the correct shaping for when you cut out this pattern piece. So these are gonna be our circle drill holes. And then this is gonna be a notch here at the fold of the top as well as down here. We'll have our grain line for the pattern piece. And then we already have seam allowance all the way around. Along the grain line, let's go ahead and label this. So this is going to be back pocket. Since we're doing the size, I'm doing a size six, I'm gonna go ahead and label six and put it in a box. And I'm gonna to do today's date. Now when we come over here and we look at our pants, this is going to be drill holes for the location for your pocket and you'll chalk those onto the main body fabric. And then of course this is the top location. And now you can get a sense of what your pocket is going to look like on your pants plus the seam allowance. Now that we've finished our back pocket, we also have our yoke piece and our contour waistband. Let's finalize this back pattern piece. 